Oh, you know these guys? I sure do. They know you. Much respected. Tremendous. They are rootsy. Yep. They are. They got it going on. They, yeah. That's they're what happening. Was, that's what they're happening. They work hard. They play hard. They, they play hard. They work hard. They look good. They feel they, good. That, yeah. We could have said this. Pretty much all you need. The wrestling life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, it's episode 269, it is June 18, 2021, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about, right here on the first and the only wrestling podcast. That's right. So we missed last week because I was out of town, and uh, thank you for dog sitting, but I understand that you went to a, I wanted to make sure we did not run out of time for this uh you went to the uh major wrestling figure podcast live show at jimmy's famous seafood how was that i did it was uh it was a pretty fun show uh uh you know now everybody's or most people are vaccinated it was a little more it's pretty relaxed and they really jam packed that. Uh, it's like in a they, Jimmy Seafood is a is a pretty famous restaurant Ront in Baltimore, especially to professional wrestlers. Um, for for folks who may not know, and they they have like a nice wedding venue upstairs, which is where they uh, where they held the podcast. They did a whole weekend of podcasts. Uh, Jeff Jarrett and and that Carney Conrad were there on on Saturday, and then uh, the Good Brothers, your your favorite duo, oh, yeah, uh, were, were there Sunday. Thing um, thing I don't understand about the Good Brothers is Rocky Romero is, by all accounts, a genuinely good dude, and one of the best guys in wrestling. And yet he is like best friends with the Good Brothers, which I don't know makes yeah. me makes me question that narrative. But go ahead. Yeah, still keeps booking TJP on all those New Japan Strong shows. So you know he's not that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Anyway. But yeah, the show itself was that uh, was pretty fun. Some surprise guests, including AEW superstar Max Caster, um, who was trained by Brian Myers and Pat Buck. So there's that connection for you. Um, you had Shark Boy showed up. Ah, the Shark Boy. That's right. Um, problem for Shark Boy was uh, he his segment was right after they shot an angle with Nick Gage for. Matt Cardona's upcoming death match for GCW with him. <laughs> sure. Uh, during, yeah, in between segments, Nick Gage ran in and threw a guy onto the table where uh, myself and my brother Cal were sitting. And, uh, and uh, guy, it, it's, it wasn't like a, a wrestling table. These are like circular, like wedding tables because it's a wedding like venue mostly. Right. And uh, he threw a guy and the guy took a big, big fancy bump on the table and knocked people's drinks over thankfully not my things were uh, were damaged but there was a really funny moment about two minutes later when a waiter was walking by and one of uh, one of the other gentlemen sitting at, at at the table we were at uh sort of sheepishly went um they knocked over my soda could i could i get another one and the guy <laughs> looked at him and went i i i don't know ask the bar and walked away <laughs> what <laughs> yeah no that was like I assume Jimmy Seafood knew they were going to do this, but huh. uh, but they seemed a little. Uh, but maybe not all of the staff was uh, was <laughs> was clued in on on that fact. So sure. so felt bad for the people that got drinks spilled, and uh, he practically landed in in somebody's lap. So it was it, that was quite a uh, quite interesting. But then yes, right after that they brought out the Shark Boy, and uh, people were just like talking while he was while they were up there like going mm-hmm. over his little. Uh, his his several action figures that he had he had surprisingly he has like two or three considering how short lived I feel like that TNA line was but um, but anyway other other uh, luminaries included the man himself Jeff Jarrett and they announced that he's going to have a Hasbro style figure uh, that is uh, that is in the style of his unreleased one from 1995 based on the same concept art and everything so that was kind of cool and then they sang with my baby tonight to end the show so that was that was fun um they also had maven there uh because that's like he's like he's like one of their crew (laughs) 
huh. he's like he's he's been at like three of their live shows and and they've like uh they're like they're like helping they like helped him get in touch with like the pwt guy and and all this stuff so it's uh <laughs> i don't know why but it's like they have this yeah they have this like weird collection of like guys <laughs> who show up at a lot of their shows and uh yeah but overall it was a fun time and uh yeah it was a good time but yes yeah, definitely the 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 most memorable part was definitely having having a guy take a bump at the table i, w- I was sitting on and nearly uh landing on my cell phone that was that was something yeah it feels like maybe uh they should have smartened up the staff if they were gonna do that yeah and like i said i assume like the owner and maybe security knew right but I don't think that I don't know that like yeah the wait staff or the or the rest of the, the folks knew about it so yeah that was uh that was that was sure something uh, <laughs> but yeah I had a I had a, a pretty darn good time and it's it's fun and those guys they really hustle like they're they're all over the place and uh, whether you like them as personalities or not I think it's it's fun and wrestling in and of itself is a different flavor of nerds. So crossing that over with dorks like me who like to collect action figures and stuff. It's like, yeah, that's fun. That's a fun time for me. So yeah, that's, it's a good meeting of a, a couple of my, my various nerdy interests. Good times. Good times. And, uh, and thank you for watching my dog so that I could go to the Minneapolis St. Paul airport and see Bob Saget. <laughs> wow. I'm talking about Barry in the lead here. Yeah, I'm not trying to be a one-upper. That's really not what I do. But <laughs> <laughs> if there's anything that could top the story of going to the live wrestling podcast here on this wrestling podcast, it would be seeing Full House's Bob Saget <laughs> in the Minneapolis-St. Paul airport wearing sunglasses indoors with his age and inappropriate wife. <laughs> Tell you I... what, you follow with social media, they do seem to love each other very much. Well, you would hope so, <laughs> since they're married and all. Yes, that's fair. Well, we have wrestling to talk about now. Uh, WWE has a pay-per-view this weekend. It's Hell in a Cell. I'm most forward, lo- most looking forward to uh, the Mick Foley uh, Broken Skull Sessions that <laughs> drops the same day on Peacock slash the WWE Network. But I suppose Hell in a Cell, there's five matches announced. We can go through them here real quick. I'm not going to save the main event for last because I want to save the Alexa Bliss match for last uh, <laughs> because that can kind of, well, I'm sure we'll go down several rabbit trails off of that one. But real quick here, uh, they have the top four, their top four titles on the line on the show. Uh, Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre in a Hell in a Cell match for the WWE title. Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair for the Raw Women's title. Bianca Belair versus Bailey for the SmackDown women's title and Roman Reigns defending against Rey Mysterio inside Hell in a Cell for the universal title. What jumps out at you regarding the build to any of these four matches? Uh, I think the fun, the fun part is that the Charlotte and Rhea feud is mostly built around Nikki Cross. Uh, that's fun. Yeah, that's weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know why. Like they it just is. And like and the the storyline is that uh Nikki Cross is this unbelievable underdog because she keeps lasting somewhere between like one and three minutes without getting pinned. Yeah, that's really dumb. And they made her cut a promo about how she's not the prettiest or the smartest. Yes. Or, or the most experienced, despite having like twice <laughs> as much wrestling experience as almost anyone else, yeah. including Charlotte and Rhea. Uh yeah. on, sure. On on their own, at least in the women's division yeah. but uh yeah that's uh yeah that's that's bad that's bad stuff but i mean you know <laughs> that's what we're doing um yeah i think that's that's stuck out to me is i don't think anything they've done has been terrible in a vacuum but it's one of those things where it's like well all this stuff they're doing at the end of it i wasn't really like man i really want to see rhea ripley wrestle charlotte i was just like they 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 tried with a pull apart i thought Mm -hmm. and i thought everyone in that angle uh, they did a pull apart with charlotte and Rhea. i thought charlotte and Rhea were good in that angle uh it it, it lacked the super intensity that you get with a live crowd doing one of those things but i thought that was good yeah i would agree with that and it felt like a 
go home angle. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we talked about that last month. We talked about it a lot recently, a lot of times. And again, it's a different era. It's a different priorities are different. Um, but it does feel like sometimes we there's where we just do, it's like, well, it's the last week for the show. You know, this person wins a match, this person cuts a promo and it's all really by the numbers. So at least they like, they did something slightly, you know, they picked one of their three or four tricks that they do for a go home show for this angle. So. They shot an actual angle, which they don't right. do very often. <laughs> Great. Yeah. I, you know, I try not to look a gift horse in the mouth and stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, the other one is title feud, Bianca and Bailey. I like everyone involved here. I just don't think it's been particularly good um, or effective at making me want to see the two of them wrestle. Uh, yeah, in retrospect, maybe it's bad that there's only uh, two women in the women's division on uh, on SmackDown. Yeah, it's a strange decision. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't have anything to say. I mean, like. Bailey is the jerk right. now. <laughs> yes, that's unexpected. Um, I who I mean, he got another one. Who who would have thought? But <laughs> she's become a slave to the Joker in her mind. And sure. uh, yeah, there she yeah, is. Yeah, it's. I assume we're treading water, and Bianca will rematch with Sasha if whenever Sasha comes back. Or I yeah, I think know. it's going to be soon. I think it's uh, this next pay per view cycle. Yeah. So yeah, that and that'll that'll probably be really good. So. You just, it's just one of those, you know, patented WWE months where we're just, we're just, we're just gritting, gritting our teeth, and we're doing a match that we've already done a couple of times because we're bad we, at planning. We forgot that they there needed to be an opponent between uh, April and August. Yeah, Roman and Rey Mysterio build for that. Okay, like they hit all the right beats. There's a little bit too much of the Uso Reigns family drama on SmackDown for me. Like Mm -hmm. it is the best thing they got going. So I understand, but they absolutely beat it into the ground. (laughs) It's like by the time SmackDown's over, like I never want to see Roman Reigns again until the next week. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's good or bad. Uh, And Rey Mysterio obviously feels very much like a placeholder, but uh, I guess I I could probably count on one hand the number of bad Rey Mysterio matches I've ever seen. So I'm sure this will be good. Yeah, I think it'll be a really good match. Um, yeah, this is going to be a weird comparison, and I don't I don't necessarily mean it entirely. There are elements of what they have done with Roman Reigns for the last few months that gives me the same vibes that like watching a Raw from 2003 gives me, where that the top heel is so fully positioned as the only star on the show that you, when you bring a new challenger for, for him and it's a guy who is a middle of the card tag guy in this case, you just know this is a placeholder. We're going to get four weeks of I'm the head of the table, acknowledge me promos and the baby face is going to vow to be the one that finally beats him. And then the baby face is going to lose. Yes. Um, and I like to be clear, I think Roman Reigns is better in e- every way <laughs> than I think when I, than 2003 Triple H. <laughs> um, so I'm not saying that, that it's, it's quite as, it's quite at that level yet, but I do think you need to introduce a challenger that, and put something behind them that makes fans believe that, Hey, maybe this guy could actually be the one to, beat roman reigns um and so, i think so if he gets if he gets sorry i mean to cut you off but if he gets seen at SummerSlam and the rocket mania which i think they're hoping for um I, he can't lose either of those matches so he's pretty much going to be champion you know what 18 months plus going into that that wrestlemania or coming out of that wrestlemania it's like well then he's got to hold it longer but then the guy who beats him should be the guy and i hope i hope it's not brock lesnar like we can we can make (laughs) we can make a guy right eventually at the end of all this dominic mysterio can be the guy (laughs) i mean he's a guy (laughs) (laughs) he's a guy and he's always been a guy and he'll always be a guy guy. yes (laughs) 
but yes, to your point, this would be if you're doing all of this, you would hope that it leads to making a new a new top guy. Yeah, you would hope. Although, like Vince's last plan like this was the Undertaker loses to Brock and then Roman beats Brock and Roman becomes the guy and he got cold feet on it. And it's like, okay, well, that was the last time that was Vince's last grand experiment and making it top guy and it failed. So, but I am intrigued. I am intrigued if they have the foresight to think, okay, well we can make our next guy. It's been seven years or or eight years or nine years of Roman almost at this point. It's time to make the next guy. I think that's a very uh, rare forward thinking on their part. If in fact, that's what they're thinking. Yeah. I mean, I think, I, I think, yeah, I think we're definitely going to get, at least the Cena match. We'll we'll see about Dwayne. Um, yeah, it always seems like he has a movie that's going to pay him twenty million dollars every WrestleMania season. Right. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll yeah. see about that. But if that uh, right, there's not there's nothing inherently wrong with we're really going to build this up. I just think you need to give. I mean, in in the sense of in the matches themselves, not so much, but in like in the sense of the television build to the sort of in-between feuds, there needs to be a little bit more uh, hope, a little bit yes. a few more hope spots for the good guys that are going to lose to Roman in, in the meantime. And yes. I think it's when Roman just comes out and destroys Dominic and Ray every week and then cuts a promo about how he's better than everyone and then backs it up by beating everybody's ass. It's like, okay, this is, this feels like placeholder stuff and right. you get kind of stuck in that rut where even if it's, you know, well-performed monologues uh, right. uh, about how dominant he is and you have Paul Heyman making goofy faces in the <laughs> corner and you yes. have the, you know, the Uso stuff, if, if that's your, if that's your jam, um, that's great. But yeah, I think at this point it's like, Oh, it's father's day. Uh, Ray is fighting for the honor <laughs> of his son and he's going to go in and lose. Yeah. That's, that's like booking malpractice. <laughs> Like, well, we put smiles on faces here. So what we do. That's right. That's right. So, yeah, I don't know. That's yeah, that, that that's just a weird thing to book if the payoff isn't. It's kind of like uh, when when Jake Roberts humped Cody's wife and we didn't really ever get payoff to that. I forgot about that. Um, where it's like, if you're going to do that, if you're going to have Roman beat up Ray's son in front of him and demolish him. <laughs> Uh, Ray should kill him and win his belt, or yeah, you yeah. shouldn't do that angle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got no problem with that. I got no problem with that line of thinking. Uh, <laughs> they did this with Ray and Brock, Brock Lesnar too. You remember that? <laughs> yes, and then Ray and Dom uh, <laughs> double teamed him and still lost at the pay per view. Yeah, he should have won that. He should have won that match. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, but yeah, that's fine. Um, okay, then we got Alexa Bliss and Shayna Baszler. Uh, we missed the week where Shayna Baszler ran scared from a doll. We missed uh, talking about that on the show. Um, that's like an all-time bad segment. Yeah, I think they're losing the ability to ever mock like the Dungeon of Doom again. <laughs> like, <laughs> like no one involved with this stuff gets gets to ever make fun of like bad WCW <laughs> again because they're producing this stuff. Now, I, I will say, as, as if we're looking glass half full, which we like to try to do sometimes on this show, uh, there is so much WWE television that is produced that is just like toothless and boring. Yes. And this is very memorably bad. Oh, yeah. And if those are my two choices, given that I have made the decision that I'm not going to just stop watching. Uh, I would prefer memorable and bad and funny. Um, especially when they start thinking they're like, Oh, look, we're going to get like 18 different shots of her stamping on the, on the doll. Yes. And then we're going to do like a shot in the mirror. When we start think when, when, when Kevin Dunn starts thinking he's like a real director. Yes. I love that stuff because it's so hokey and lame, but they clearly think it's like, it's, it's the we make movies pal like it's that's yeah. that's the stuff like they really think this is good they must they keep putting it on tv that's right and so yeah now they're now the the 
the shooter is going to wrestle the the tiny uh, demon goth girl. Child. Child, yes. Who has a playground set. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep, somebody's... By the way, while we're on this subject, but well... I'll save that, but um, put it, let's put a pin in uh, WWE being perverts and come back to it. <laughs> uh, Alexa wrestled on Raw this week, and they trumpeted this as like her first match on Raw in four months or something. I have no memory of what her last match was besides the one with Randy Orton, which wasn't a match. I just assumed that she wasn't going to wrestle anymore. And but anyway... Now they booked her in two matches in a week, which is certainly one way of going about things. But uh, this was she wrestled Nia Jax, which is really just a backdrop for the star of WWE, Reginald. <laughs> and a story came out on Fightful.com this week, or Fightful Select, uh, their Patreon, that Vince McMahon is a huge fan of Reginald. Shame. Shocking. Shocking. Same. So am I. Me and Vince on the same page on this one. You couldn't tell by the way that he's... (laughs) By the way, they put him into the build for the WrestleMania main event. (laughs) With with no real payoff? (laughs) No. Just one week he was... They moved them out of that feud. (laughs) Well, I think he... I think he got... (laughs) I think he got COVID. (laughs) Ah, yeah, there was there was a couple of weeks where he just mysteriously disappeared there. Yeah, he mysteriously vanished. And um, but it's nice that the uh, the star of WWE, (laughs) the protagonist, (laughs) yes, the main the main protagonist of WWE, Reginald, has a spot there as Vince's uh, current (laughs) favorite character. And and we did a bit where it appeared that Alexa Bliss was hypnotizing him, if you notice, at the at the end of the uh the Naya match. I have no memory of how that match. Ended. I have no memory of that. I put it all out of my mind. <laughs> yeah, Alexa hits her her, her moon salt on Naya, and then uh, Reggie runs in for the DQ. And then they did like the doink, the two doinks, like miming each other's movements. Spot. Oh, nice. Yeah. We're again. That's, we're we're making movies, pal. It's got that's Bruce. That's got Bruce Pritchard written all over it. Because who else remembers <laughs> two doinks miming each other? I mean, Vince certainly doesn't. Vince doesn't remember. <laughs> Hence right. by why we get, you know, three weeks in a row where Elias wrestles Jackson Riker and walks oh. out and gets countered out. Like, oh. the guy does not remember what was on television the week before. Like, it almost seems like it's like a bet between, like, maybe Bruce and some of the writers. It's like, how many weeks in a row can we get the exact same segments on TV without Vince noticing that we're doing the exact same segment? Would not be surprising at all. Yeah. Of all the people that company has under under contract, we're doing something with Jackson Riker. Yeah, but we're doing something with him in the way that like we did something with Damian Sandow or like this guy's going to be forgotten, pun very much intended in like another three weeks, I assume. I mean, I it, it can't get here fast enough. He <laughs> he has the charisma of a potato. I, I don't know what else to say about Jackson Riker. Uh, did we talk? We didn't talk about Drew and Lashley. Drew and Lashley. Oh yeah, <laughs> they've been wrestling since the Carter administration, I believe. I believe so. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's uh, they did a six man with a DQ finish, and and a, and they brawled some. Like it was again. It's like in a vacuum. It's fine. It's paint by numbers. WWE build for a show did not feel like this horrible blood feud where they need to be locked inside a cage drew pin lashley with a claim they They restarted the match like 56 times that's right that's right okay but drew did eventually claymore and pin lashley okay all right all right my mistake but yeah no no problem it's easy like i didn't remember reginald being hypnotized (laughs) i mean he's too which is more forgettable (laughs) right the star of wwe or the wwe title match exactly (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I think it's 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 all fine. Like, and they're probably going to have a pretty decent, you know, hoss fight on on Sunday. Although I do wonder if sometimes the cage is more of a hindrance to that style of WWE wrestling. You know, they can't unless they do a big stunt. Like, they're going to like break one of the walls in the cell or something. 
Right. They don't um, do blood anymore, so you keep, so you're not going to have that crutch. Right. And well, and they can't do a, a 60 minute monologue because the other cell match is going to have that. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah, they, I guess they just got to throw each other into the cage a bunch. Maybe maybe they'll get to use like a lot of weapons and stuff. That's the thing that these cell matches have just become like TLC matches <laughs> mm-hmm. inside a structure. And it works when the women do it. So I'm not going to complain too much about it, but True. also it's completely, completely different than what cell matches have been for the first, you know, or what they were for the first 20 years they existed. Yeah. I guess it all goes back to when they made it its own pay-per-view and did like four on that first show. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. We don't do Hell in a Cell. It's the same thing with the War Games or or any of that stuff, right? It's we don't do it because we're telling a story that we want to lead to it. We do it because it's October, or in this case, this year it's June, and yeah. that's Hell in a Cell month. So either maybe I mean at least the Drew and Lashley feud, you'd be like, well, they've been feuding for a long time. It's fine if they have a cage match. It's like Roman and Ray. It's like well, they've been feuding for about three weeks, so. But it's the Hell in a Cell show, so they're gonna be their first match is gonna be in a Hell in a Cell, right? Right. Um, back to the uh, pervert talk. Uh, there were three separate women who were barefoot in the ring on Raw <laughs> this week. They made Alexa Bliss. I'm sorry, not Alexa. They made Charlotte Flair, uh, Mandy Rose, and Dana Brooke uh, all had to do angles barefoot. What I is mean, happening over there? I hate to defend the perverts. <laughs> Here's my new segment, Defending the Perverts. Uh, Isn't that the one name of one of Russo's podcasts? <laughs> uh, but Charlotte could have worn different shoes because she. I assume she knew she was going to do a pull-apart brawl angle. <laughs> like she chose to wear high heels and then took them off to do the brawl. That's what always happens, though. You would think, except for like Bailey and Sasha would wear tennis shoes sometimes. Like you would think. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just like sometimes it seems more deliberate than like the Charlotte one. But to your point, there were three bare. There were three <laughs> different barefoot women on the, on the show, and uh, and plus, you know, the regular the regular fetish. Right. None of this happened before Jarrett showed up. <laughs> So he is still employed, even though he's doing this podcast yeah. and everything. Okay, yeah, which is funny considering you know all the inter- independent contractor stuff, and you can't have third party deals. And you Pritchard and Jarrett and have podcasts. Yeah, and Jarrett now has a toy deal with someone that isn't Mattel. So that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, Small Joe's back with NXT. Oh yeah, I guess the speculation he can't get cleared as a wrestler. Not sure what exactly what to believe on that, but I would think that he would have no shortage of suitors who would be willing to pay him more to wrestle than WWE was willing to pay him to be an authority figure on NXT television. So I'm assuming there's something to the he can't get cleared thing. Yeah, that would that would seem to make sense. Um and again, we talked about it at the time. Joe's a guy I would want. I would want to keep, so it's good for it's certainly good for for WWE or NXT in this case. But yeah, having him be a guy who stands next to William Regal, uh, and it's also one of those things where inevitably, when Joe gets involved and cuts a promo, you're going to want to see Joe wrestle whoever he's cutting the promo on because he's yep. very good. Yep, and he tends to pull focus because he's Samoa Joe. So that, so like, I hate to say that like his talent is a detriment, but sometimes <laughs> like I understand why they get really bland announcers. And like, I see, at least I see the thought process sure. of like hiring a Todd Grisham or having John Laurinaitis be the GM because you're right. like, well, no one will be outshone in the charisma department or will be more or will be less entertaining than this guy. Right. And and you can't pay, and if if you can't pay it off, like that was the deal with, you know, Stephanie being an authority figure all the time. It's like, mm-hmm. well, she doesn't wrestle, so she doesn't. Get, she, you can't get your heat back, right? Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Like I don't. I don't. I'm, I mean, good for him that you know he, he found a job and hopefully he's happy. And again, he would absolutely be a guy who should be running like 
a promo class at the performance center um, because he's good at both real, I mean, real, I should say non WWE <laughs> promos. Yeah. And, and he's also pretty good at WWE promos. So he is a guy that I think would be an invaluable resource to run a class like that. I don't know if they want that type of class being run <laughs> anymore though, because they haven't really done one since, uh, since Dusty passed. Yeah, that's, that's strange. He's a guy like Sean that is good at, absolutely everything he's ever done in pro wrestling Mm -hmm. 100 (laughs) percent. yeah even when he had the mohawk and the penis on his face there was a time in tna everybody where he had a fake tattoo on his face that looked phallic (laughs) and he carried a sword there wasn't a literal penis on his face no no there wasn't okay uh aew is kind of treading water they're doing I don't know. This will be their third straight uh, Friday night show this week because being preempted on TNT and then next week they're on Saturday night. And then I think they're back to normal come July, but they're not many people are watching these Friday night shows. And so they're not really booking a whole lot of stuff on these Friday night shows. I guess they get the Kenny Omega jungle boy match for next week on Saturday. Maybe they're hoping that's going to do better. But uh, aside from them kind of treading water and not really doing anything big on Dynamite, uh, they're running a, a 20, 23,000 seat tennis stadium in New York uh, in September, which is certainly interesting. Yeah, um, I mean, I like the idea of going to to not going to and this may be more because they're not allowed to go to certain arenas in New York. Right. Right. Um, but I like the idea of doing like non-traditional sets and non-traditional arenas. So, I mean, God, God knows if they could, they could actually fill that building up, but, um, but even if it's, you know, seven or 8,000 people, it could be a pretty unique environment, but yeah, that's, yeah. As as far as the shows themselves, yeah, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of just, okay, that happened. (laughs) You know, we did, we did Miro versus evil Uno. (laughs) Yeah. We, right yeah that's nothing yeah and, and <laughs> like there's nothing particularly wrong with a lot of it but uh yeah i i just thought about last year when they had they had like one they, i think they only had one or two weeks where they were preempted and yeah. on one of those shows they did the brody lee title change yeah uh, which is like one of the best segments they've ever done right um and it was like wow they really chose not to phone it in <laughs> and <laughs> right it's uh, almost a year later now and we apparently have reached the point in the television production cycle where they're like, ain't nobody watching this show. We're going to do the bare minimum, which still means about, you know, 65 <laughs> segments, but you know, yes. Yeah. But they're just not very exciting. And most of the yeah. matches are, are not super exciting and we're kind of treading water as far as like new, new programs and stuff like that. Yeah, I do think it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy when you do that though. I would like mm-hmm. to see people try <laughs> when you're right. when you're outside your time slot or whatever, mm-hmm. but also I I understand the thought process. Uh but yeah, I, hey C- Cody and QT are going to wrestle again. We got that to look forward to. In a strap match. <laughs> Maybe the worst the terrible the worst stipulation. stipulation. Yes. It's terrible. Also, like terrible. they just did a bull rope match, which is essentially the same thing. Yes. Uh, so, but they're doing another one. <laughs> yeah. And Brock, Brock what is what is uh, Arn's Brock Anderson? Large adult son's name. Brock Anderson. Yes. yes. Brock Anderson is going to wrestle. Uh, uh, is going to te- te- team with Cody, and then is uh, is, is going to be an AEW wrestler now. And, I and, uh, I hope he sucks. It would be funny. <laughs> It would be hilarious. It would be really funny. Um, I mean, just, I mean, again, it's that like proud tradition, right? Of like, of your Eric Watts and your Scott Putskis and your Shane your McMahon's. David, yes, <laughs> the, <laughs> the ultimate fail son, Shane McMahon. Yes, and, uh-huh. and David David Flair's of just yeah, you know, pretty darn talented, great uh, father, just just giving none of that charisma or talent to his uh, to his offspring. Yeah. You know, they put Tori Wilson with David <laughs> and it was like, mm-hmm. you know what? She can cover up for a lot of what he doesn't have. <laughs> <laughs> I was not against that pairing. Poor David. They put him on TV before he 
getting trained. <laughs> yeah. Like, and, it, and they did like some crappy stuff. Like they put him in the ring with Benoit and let Benoit like concuss him and stuff. Like, yeah, Hogan beat the crap out of him with a with a weightlifter belt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like they were there were some really kind of <laughs> crappy stuff that whether or not that that was management's you know encouraging people to do that or if that was the wrestlers taking liberties because they're on live TV and nobody can stop them, I don't know. But right. it was still a crappy situation and you know a, a no win situation for a guy that that young and that inexperienced yeah here we are uh 22 23 years later tori wilson used to be a 10 she's now an 11 i don't understand how that happens (laughs) (sighs) don't understand it's 20 it's two decades of destruction (laughs) it's it's pretty tremendous the Uh, immortal tori wilson you know when hogan beat david flair with that weight belt (laughs) Flair put in his book that he was like legitimately held a grudge against Hogan for that. And now Hogan and Flair are best buddies. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I wonder what ever happened with that. Well, don't, I feel like Rick and David don't talk very much these days. That might be like, I don't, I don't know that they're estranged, but it doesn't right. like, I, like the last thing I remember seeing David Flair in was the 30 for 30. And he w- did not have positive things to say about his father. <laughs> I, he's 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 cool with the siblings though and i would think mm-hmm. that i would think that they're all cool like I you know so. they might not yeah they might but that would that is one possible explanation good i'm glad i've i'm glad i've wanted to uh do a 30 minute episode and i spent five <laughs> minutes talking about david flair and tori wilson it's great oh. uh new japan's rescheduled a bunch of stuff they or scheduled uh, rescheduled their Tokyo Dome show for the end of July and then canceled the other stadium show but added two stadium shows in September <laughs> because let's just let's just keep running shows that's, the that's... summer struggle that is that is uh an aptly for... titled yes aptly titled event uh they're going to do Shingo and uh and Ibushi I think that'll be pretty good yeah that sounds like it'll be all right uh I guess I think we missed talking about that on the air, but were you surprised to see them belt up Shingo? Yeah. Yeah. I would have thought, well, yes, <laughs> I would have said, I would have saved that for like, you know, Tokyo dome, 60,000 people or 40,000 mm-hmm. people or however many to put in there just because I think he's that talented and it should be a big deal when he wins the championship for the first time. And they chose to do it, you know, in front of 5,000 people or whatever. And that's fine. Like it, you know, the circumstances are the circumstances, and I think they're very clumsily trying to make their way through them. But they are just trying to get by the way everybody else is, and so they just decided to pull the trigger because he's one of the five best guys in the entire world, and his talent could not be denied. <laughs> I mean, you think about they brought him in as like a junior guy, <laughs> basically to be a stopgap because Hiromo was hurt. Yep. And now he's their <laughs> world heavyweight champion. He's like, he's he holds the most prestigious championship in wrestling. Yeah, in yeah. What a like what a marvel! <laughs> like what a tremendously talented man. Yeah, um, yeah, and that, like it's yeah. I was I was happy to see it. Like I because I, again yeah. like like for every every reason we've just mentioned. Um, but yeah, I, I thought I thought ultimately he needs to beat Osprey for it because that was sort of the story they had begun to tell. Yeah. Or, but- those two I mean, his career rivals is a good story. Mm-hmm. So I was a little surprised. I thought he would lose it. Or I thought usually maybe he would get like a Naito type first reign where they turn him, they try to turn him heel and, and he wins it as a heel. And then he gets the big baby face win a year from now or whatever. Sure. But they, they went a different way. And I, again, I'm not, I'm not complaining at all. And I think having him be the top guy in LIJ and letting Naito do tags probably the best for everyone for a while wonder how naito's taken that naito has a lot of 2005 SummerSlam Shawn michaels in him mm-hmm. <laughs> if you just watch his performances in matches that he's gonna lose mm-hmm. uh, he's he's got a lot of that in him i wonder how i wonder it can't feel good yeah i mean and again i like his body betrayed him right it's not like he's right 40 years old or people stopped wanting to see him like it's yeah i'm sure he is, it's, he is like 38 i think okay he's a so he's bit. getting there 
I mean, per per New Japan main event status. Uh, well, yeah, that's true. Ibushi's forty, and Tanahashi's forty four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, but yeah, his, his body's starting to break down on him. People still love him. People still, I think, crowds will still respond to him like he's a top guy. And I'm sure he feels like, yeah, there's there might be a little bit of 05 Sean maybe mixed without the uh, extracurricular issues. Uh, maybe a little bit of like that 98. I'm not ready to go. I'm not ready to <laughs> do the favors for Steve, right. Sean and him too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I don't, I don't know. I don't know that any of the, I don't know Naito obviously, but I've drawn some conclusions just based on watching most of his matches for the last <laughs> five years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny. The things you pick up when you're like, Oh, you can, you can just tell there's a different vibe. When, he's when... not he's not wearing wrist tape in this match tonight <laughs> i think that means he's gonna phone this one in <laughs> yeah yep that's it was like you know it was like omega's house show tights for years right like it was right. those, it's like yeah you can always tell when he's when he's <laughs> not given it is all yeah all right well we've covered everything and then some is there anything else that you'd like to talk about <laughs> I just want to reiterate that earlier today, Ethan, uh, or yesterday, Ethan messaged me and said, can we do like a quick 30 minute show? Uh, and I said, sure. And he said, we don't have much to talk about. So, you know, but, you know, we should at least do a show, try to get 30 minutes. And I went, yeah, sure. And then we talked for an hour because we got on tangents about David Flair and Tori Wilson. You know, I said before, when we started recording before the show, when we spent 20 minutes talking about baseball before the show started, <laughs> said, you know, it's never time wasted. It's just, it's always time well spent uh, when we, when we discuss baseball and whatever else with each other, I feel the same way. Anytime Tori Wells is discussed, it's always time <laughs> well spent. I um, will never tire. Of, I will now <laughs> of that. I will never tire of talking about which are trying to theorize which specific WWE producer is the foot perv. It's Jarrett. But, <laughs> but you know, Pritchard, I mean, there's Pritchard, there's some weird stuff once Pritchard got there too. So it can't all be Jarrett, you know, yeah. one of them's the foot guy. One of them's the, the Alexa stuff. Oh, like, oh just, gosh. Abyss is, I bet, I bet Abyss has got some weird ideas. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, there's for some, sure. there's some real weirdos working there. <laughs> Yeah, un- unlike us. All right, so until <laughs> next time, everybody. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Farewell. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Oh, yeah. So tell me about this uh, Defector article about uh, putting stuff on the baseball. Oh, yeah. Well, the basic point of it was um, just that MLB has a habit of creating problems and then doing the absolute <laughs> worst job of fixing the problems. Oh, and, for sure. And usually ends with them putting all of the onus on the players uh, to, or that, or that it's somehow the players are looking for like an unfair advantage or something. Um, and and yeah i mean i think there's some like i like i don't know i don't generally think there's like i like this wasn't like this didn't seem to be like a big deal with me like i said i when i saw the the tyler glasnow interview from earlier this week where he was like well they like the balls are different now than they were in april and (laughs) like they can't if they if they changed them and then gave us the new ones in the off season and we had months to prepare I don't think you would be seeing as many guys complain. I was like, okay, that seems like a reasonable take to me. And like, it's very clear that they F with the balls because there was, was 2019 where there was just like, like there had never been such like an obvious, like the, like home runs were up like 800% or something. Right. Whatever the number was. Whatever, yeah. It may have been 18 because Palmer was talking about this last night, but yeah. Yeah. There yeah. was yeah, there was, they were you know up quite a bit and right yeah whatever year that was nineteen or eighteen so it's like yeah. clearly they messed with the balls also 
maybe Major League Baseball shouldn't be allowed to own the company that makes Major League Baseball. <laughs> I, that's like the least of the problems to me. Like, if you believe that, that's fine with me. <laughs> but well, like, think that would take the, you know, that would take a lot of pressure off of them from the Players Association if they go, well, this is out of our hands. We're not, you know, we have an independent company that makes our, our product for us. Like, but of course, you know, that would imply that they don't want to tweak things every right. every six months or whatever every three months or whatever right and i think they do want to do that oh yeah for sure yeah yeah i guess i hadn't thought of it from the um it, it would like reduce strife between the league office and the players union if they didn't own the thing like i, I don't have a problem with them tweaking the ball <laughs> like i i, I just mm-hmm. I just don't like if you want, you want more or less offense, whatever the point about doing it in the off season and even telling the players what, you know, what they're doing and whatever, including them more in the process. Sure. I don't, I don't really care if they own the company that that makes the balls. Mm. I just think that, uh, yeah, whatever the deal is, but, but the point about they always, they create their own problems <laughs> and then go go about trying to fix them in the worst way is a thousand percent correct. <laughs> right. Yeah. Whoa, Bailey. Speaking of, I'd like to thank you for uh, <laughs> caring for the special needs dog that lives in my house. <laughs> I would pay up to $10 to watch uh, five minutes of interactions between the two of you. <laughs> $20, $20 an hour. Mm. Uh, particularly when it come when it came to um, you trying to cajole him into eating his pills that he hates. Oh yeah, that was fun. <laughs> or walks. <laughs> well, the walks, I will say he did much less. I mean, it's been almost two years since I had watched him. So, right. but right. So maybe this is changed. Like he only dead weighted me and wouldn't leave one time over the entire. And then he went out like a half hour later. Okay. So like he didn't do a lot of what my previous problems <laughs> were when trying to walk him or get him or when it's like, he, Hey, you haven't pooped in uh 23 <laughs> hours. Can you please go outside and poop so that I don't get woken up at 2 AM by you barking at me. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, but he just wouldn't, and he would, so there was almost none of that, which I appreciated. And (laughs) the, but yeah, I was like, so I, I, whenever I message you Sunday afternoon, like, oh, he'd, he'd thrown up and, and he seemed, he seemed a little, (laughs) a little, uh, a little sluggish, I guess, because his stomach was upset or whatever. And I was like, all right, well, but he was still willing to go out. Um, I think, and I think when he didn't want to go out Saturday night, it was because there were fireworks. Yeah. So, and you had mentioned that to me that that was an issue sometimes. So, yeah, he hates that. <laughs> Understandable. I also hate that. Yes. Um, but, but when I took him out Sunday night after he had thrown up, uh, you know, the little bit of food that he had eaten and his, and, and all of the grass he had eaten, <laughs> like I took him out and he just like beeline for every patch of grass he saw and was furiously <laughs> trying to eat it over and over again and i was like yanking him and calling his name and doing all this stuff and it's just like at a certain point it was like this is like this is like a comedy but there was li- and then for his late night walk on on whatever night that was i took him out and he's he literally he like he walks into the in the parking lot behind the elder care facility yeah. and he throws up in the parking lot <laughs> looks at it for a second and then immediately tries to run for the nearest patch of grass in the parking lot and tries to start eating grass again. <laughs> like, I was yeah. like, all right, you're, you're, do- you're, <laughs> you're yeah. deranged. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's not right. Ah. Ah. You Google like, why do dogs eat grass? And they're like, well, sometimes they just, they might like the taste. Sometimes they think it helps them soothe their stomach. It's like, well, well it, but then why do they throw up? And then why does right. they think it soothes their stomach when it actually makes them throw up? <laughs> right. Yeah. I was, I, I, was, <laughs> I was, yeah, I was a little, it was just, but it, and then, yeah, he woke me up a lot. Uh, 
I think it was Saturday into Sunday. He woke me up like three times. So why? Like I don't know. He just I just like fell asleep. He just came up and started barking at me. <laughs> and huh. uh, so yeah, and I, and then I would take him out, and he would like pee a little bit, but he didn't really seem like he was. I guess he just wanted someone to pay attention to him. Um, hmm. it's fine. I don't. I, I don't know. It's it's not fine. Sorry about that. Uh, it's a personality flaw. But no. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> And I thought about it too, and I don't know, maybe this is this is not true, but it's like I thought about you being up all hours of the night a lot of the times. Yeah. And so his <laughs> sleep and I noticed like he was sleepy in like the later mornings and afternoons <laughs> when I assume you and he are both usually asleep. Yes. Um <laughs> and so and and more he seemed to have more energy and seemed a little more excitable at like the later it got <laughs> yeah yeah that's pretty accurate <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> no it's fine like it's fine you <laughs> i didn't you know you yeah. you paid me to watch your dog for two days it was fine but it was it was just at a certain point it's like oh okay like i <laughs> i and and yeah i think and i think we didn't really have a chance to get into a rhythm because it was only for a couple of days so it was, his 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 uh, routine was thrown off my routine was thrown off <laughs> Were everyone's they... third team was off routine was thrown <laughs> off everyone was unhappy <laughs> we're the original odd couple i try to keep on keeping on